Scientific gyros are beautiful things like this in gymberings that maintain their axis of spin. But the real magic lay in the toy gyroscope, the one you've seen come down the string. Toy gyros are usually supplied with a little Eiffel Tower model. And one of the standard tricks you're supposed to do is to spin the gyro, put it sideways on the tower, thus allowing the force of gravity down on that to be reacted by a normal force from the top of the tower. So you're putting a torque on about a horizontal axis and that will make the gyro precess about a vertical axis and everyone is amused. And no one takes it seriously because it is, after all, a toy, isn't it? Fine. Most interesting demonstration. Uh, let us just weigh these two things. First of all, we will weigh the gyroscope. Where's the other? Right. That's it. We will weigh the gyro, and we find it to be 310 grams. There are 312 grams. We will weigh the tower and find it to be <coughs> less than a gram. So over 300 times the weight of the tower. Now, haven't we missed something? Thank you, Bill. What did we miss? We missed the fact that if you ever try to rotate something which is eccentric, not symmetrical, you tend to... Yeah, somebody knows, they've tried. <laughs> you, uh, <coughs> you tend to shake your bones to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is happening when I do that? Apart from me getting in terrible shaking, the whole of this is trying to retain its centre of mass fixed. Let us look at the gyro again with that sort of thought in mind. Surely, 300 grams compared to 1 gram, you would expect the 300 grams to want to stay in the same place and you'd expect it to move the tower around itself. But of course it is our common experience that although that happens, the gyro on the tower does not make the tower go round the gyro. 300 times the mass, whoops, sorry about that. Can you screw back in his bearing? Friction on the table. I can hear my critics now. He has friction. We thought we would uh, remove as much of the friction as we could by spinning it on ice. Oh, it's come off the tower bill. All right. We estimate that the coefficient of friction between the tower and the ice is about 0 0.02, which is just about as small as one could expect to get without going to something exotic. Uh, it's a little bit tight on the bearing, man. Could you give me the flies? Did you do it up with your fingers? Yeah. Oh, it's all right, I can manage. Just a wee bit tight on the pivot. Ah, oh, thank you. This, of course, is an adjustable gyro. This belongs to an earlier age. Nowadays, they make the flywheels out of aluminium, and what better metal than something that's uh, one of the lightest we know for making a flywheel? So, there it is. This is the modern uh, high standard of living. This is an old-fashioned gyro, about 30, 40, 50 years ago. We have some gyros here today that are 100 years old. So here's a thought. This thing has been with us for a hundred years and we haven't noticed those things which we might have noticed. A tower on ice. Are you convinced? I was. Now this is something that needs following up, and following up means getting a little more scientific and in particular making it a bit bigger so that friction has less effect. A gyroscope that can move about the vertical axis, and when I undo this clamp, 
it has the freedom to drop as well. It is a more sophisticated model of our gyro on the tower. Let us spin this one up and see what happens. Isn't that a beauty? You can see a little mutation taking place. I can do the trick I did with the two worlds. I can make it rise up by pushing it a little faster. Notice the precessional speed now is very large because the torque is very large because the gyro is offset a long way. Now, suppose I'd clamped that there and tried to rotate it at that same speed. Watch what happens. Why did it topple? I can't get up to anything like the speed I should do before it wants to take off. It appears to exhibit no centrifugal force. Suppose we were to take this gyro out and put it in a box so that you couldn't see that there was something in the box that was spinning. I'm going to spin it up, put it in the box that you can't see, and then we'll weigh it, and then we'll put it back on there, and we'll ask a question. <laughs> well, quite things to handle these when they're moving. Put him on the balance. And he weighs about 30 ounces, nearly two pounds. They put him on the machine. Can you tighten up the nut, Bill? Thank you. Unclump the middle. There is a black box containing you know not what. And I give it a push the other way. There it goes. I pushed it round. There's a two pound mass with a real angular velocity and no angular momentum no angular momentum except from the dead weight it's not rotating because if I want to stop it there's no energy required to stop it, no effort, energy release because I didn't give it any when I began let us go one stage further with this to something bigger something more scientific we can make measurements 